with paper two being just around the corner, I'm gonna do a very quick last minute advice video for paper two. And I'm gonna keep it quick, so I know you've got lots of revision that you need to do. So let's start off by going straight into the quick fire facts, what to expect on paper two. Paper two is 91 marks and two hours long. It's worth 35% of your A-level grade. It's for topics five to eight and practicals seven to 12. 50 to 56% of the questions on this paper will be application. So bearing this in mind, let me talk you through my top tips of how to prepare as best you can for paper two, but also strategies to implement in the exam itself. Tip number one is highlighting the key information in the questions. As I said in the quick fire facts, paper two contains 50 to 56% application questions. So most of the paper. And with application questions, I have a whole video on strategies of how to answer them, which I'll link up here. So you can go and watch that if you need some extra advice. But the main thing is that you're able to identify which topic or practical is the question linking to. Thinking back to what are the key terms you need to know for that topic and what information in the question could you use in your answer to apply your knowledge of that topic to the situation you've been given. Now you are allowed highlighters in the exam to highlight the questions, but not your answers. If you highlight your answers, they might not show up when it scans in. But I recommend that you highlight the information. Sometimes I annotate as I go as well, particularly if it's one where you've got a method, you've got data, and there's quite a lot of information to process. I highlight as I go, and then I sometimes even annotate a key term or a concept I think I might need to consider or come back to within my answer. Tip number two is do not start on the comprehension. I actually didn't have this in the quick fire facts at the start, which maybe I should have done, but the final question is the comprehension on paper two, and that is worth 15 marks. And that means you should spend about 20 minutes on it. But unlike with my final advice for paper one, I do not recommend you start on the comprehension. The comprehension is one of the harder questions on the paper. It's made up of predominantly application questions. You have to read through about 20 lines worth of text, process, understand, and then be able to apply your knowledge to it. So I don't think it's good to do that first because you're often better at it once you're warmed up, meaning you've already done lots of exam questions, your brain is all active and ready to go, rather than going straight to that and that being your first set of questions. So do not start on the comprehension, save it to the end, but just bear in mind, it should take about 20 minutes. So you shouldn't be starting it really any later than 20 minutes before the exam ends. Number three then is strategies for answering the comprehension question. Now I actually did a whole video on this that came out a few days ago, which I'll link up here if you missed it, because I think that is an essential video to watch if you're taking AQA A-level biology. So I give you all the tips you need to know for how to answer the comprehension. Plus I show you a modeled example of how to go through it. Because I said I'm keeping this one quick, I'm gonna give really brief overview, but if you've got the time, definitely recommend you watch that. So the comprehension, that is, as I said, 15 to 20 lines worth of text. They number it every five lines and they always say, using the information and your knowledge, answering the following questions. And there's a series of questions which collectively add up to 15 marks. They're typically application questions and it could be from anything across topics five, six, seven, and eight. So all of the paper two topics. So it's normally a key focus or key topic that the comprehension links to, but it quite often then branches out to other parts of topics five, six, seven, and eight that it could link to as well. So what I recommend, as I said, I'm gonna go through this briefly because you've got the video that goes through it in detail, is read through all the information first with your highlighter. And as you're highlighting, I'd be linking or writing annotations of what topic it links to, or sometimes I write down what I think it means. So there has been some in the past where they've described an experiment they've done. So I've then annotated, this is the independent variable. This is a control experiment. They haven't done it for very many weeks. So those are sorts of things I might annotate as I go so that when I get to each question for the comprehension, I can quickly look back and see where was the relevant text and what have I already thought about this that might then be good to apply to that question. Tip number four, this is gonna come up on all of them and that is bullet point your answer. You are allowed to bullet point every answer on paper too. So please do it because it saves you time, makes you more concise and it makes it so much easier for you to check your answers. So bullet point your answers. And if it's a five mark question, then make sure you give six bullet points. If it's a three mark question, make sure you give four bullet points. Always give one extra than the number of marks just in case something you 
wrote wasn't a mark. Now I do want to caveat that with something that came up on one of my TikTok posts. When I say an insurance bullet point, I do not mean that when they say explicitly give two examples of organelles that dot, 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 do not give more than two examples. The reason for that is if they've explicitly told you how many examples they want of something and you give an extra one, if any that you gave were wrong and you've given an extra, you automatically will lose a mark. And that is because by giving more than you've been asked for, you're essentially telling the examiner to pick out the correct ones from what you've written, which doesn't show you know the biology. So when I say give an extra bullet point, that is only when it's questions where it doesn't ask explicitly for how many examples of something they want you to give. So now we've got that clear, bullet point your answers and make sure you give at least the number of bullet points that there are the number of marks. So that's it for my quick fire tips the day or night before paper two to help you. As I said, check out the application video and the comprehension video if you want more skill-based help. If you need help cramming the theory last minute, which I know is some of you, and uh, let's have a hands up in the comment for all of those last minute people cramming the theory right now. Because if you are, check out this entire paper two video and I recommend you watch it on times two speed so you can get in as much as possible. But for now, that's it from me and I wish you the best of luck for paper two.